I'm Douglas Anderson, Dean of the College of Business, and it's my great privilege and honor to welcome you to this extraordinary event in the history of Utah State University. We are delighted to have so many leaders and friends among us to celebrate this great day for the College of Business. I would like to recognize the people who will be on the program today, with, including, of course, John M. Huntsman and his wife, Karen. <clears throat> the Honorable John M. Huntsman, Jr., Governor of the State of Utah. and Utah State University President Stan L. Albrecht and his wife, Joyce. Now, since we have so many others to recognize, I'd ask you to hold your applause. We're also pleased to welcome President Boyd K. Packer, Elder L. Tom Perry, Elder M. Russell Ballard, and Elder Joseph B. Worthlin, all members of the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, and each of whom has significant ties to this university. I have asked our historians to tell me when the last time was that we had so many prophetic leaders on campus here in Logan at the same time. There's some debate about that, but the general consensus is that it was in 1916 when our president, John A. Widso, was recruited to rescue the University of Utah. <laughs> the story as I heard it was that he didn't want to go. He didn't want to leave Logan. Who would? and he needed a little persuasion. Perhaps Chase Peterson knows something about that, having been president of the University of Utah and whose father was president of this university. Perhaps you can confirm that, Chase. Glad to have you with us. We're delighted to have so many members of the Huntsman family who've come to celebrate this event with us today. We're also very happy to have among us a number of Armenian students who are here on Huntsman scholarships. I'm also pleased to acknowledge the many students who are watching this event via a live feed in the Sunburst Lounge. There are many distinguished alumni gathered together today who have made so many great and wonderful contributions to our university and to our college. There are government, church, and community leaders I'd also like to recognize. In attendance are members of the Utah State Legislature, the Board of Regents, the Utah State University Board of Trustees, the USU Foundation Board, our various college business advisory boards, the Commissioner of Higher Education faculty, and deans of all of our colleges, we appreciate your support. We're also grateful to have with us today Tom Garrity, former dean of the Wharton School. We're delighted, Dr. Garrity, that you've been able to join us. Thank you for coming from Pennsylvania. The music for our luncheon is being provided by Aram Arkelian. Aram, who is from Armenia, is among the prize-winning students who study at Utah State University under Gary Almano, and he is the 2007 winner of the Kingsville International Piano Competition. Join me in thanking Aaron for his wonderful musical talents. <clears throat> also, we'd like to thank members of the media, television, radio, and print who are covering these proceedings today. Now, before we dine together, I'd like to invite Elder L. Tom Perry to come forward to offer an invocation. Elder Perry is a strong supporter of Utah State University and the College of Business. It was just last year that we honored Elder Perry with the Distinguished Executive Alumnus Award, the highest honor the College of Business can bestow. Following the luncheon, we'll give you a few minutes to enjoy this lovely, or the invocation, we'll give you a few minutes to enjoy this lovely luncheon and Aram's musical talents before we continue with the program. Elder Perry. Oh God, our eternal Father in heaven, it is with the deepest gratitude that we've gathered here today in this assembly to honor, to remember the great gifts thou has given to us, the gift of agency, that we can use our time and our talents and all that thou has given us to further great events that help build leadership throughout the world. We're grateful for the Huntsmans and their great charity and uh, deep heart that they have for all events that help move thy great work forward. We're grateful for this university and what it means to us as a pillar and a strength in this great nation of ours. Grateful for the School of Business, for its leadership, for all they're doing to train great minds to carry on the functions that are so necessary in a very troubled world. 
Now wilt thou bless the food that's been prepared for us today. That we may be nourishing and strengthening to us. That we may use the strength derived in doing thy will and honoring thee. In all we do, we humbly pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. I realize that it may be dangerous to, inter to interrupt people who are eating eggy ice cream, but I'm going to do it anyway because we need to get underway. We're gathered today to celebrate a gift and a life. The gift is historic, but there is some mystery here. It's a little like Christmas morning. The packages are wrapped and under the tree, and we're all full of anticipation, but we're not entirely sure what's in the box. We'll all have to wait, myself included, for President Albrecht to open the package. What we can say is that the timing of this gift could not be better. 50 years from now, people will look back and say, December 3rd, 2007 was a tipping point, a point of inflection in the College of Business, and I think in the university. John and Karen Huntsman and their family are giving us that tipping point. As we celebrate this great milestone in the history of the college, we are also celebrating the life of John M. Huntsman. His biggest contribution to us today may well be the gift of his name. During his extraordinary career, his name has grown to represent integrity and excellence. As the school takes on his name, we will build our own reputation and raise the bar as we transform this college into what it will become tomorrow. Our program today will start with a, mu a musical number, America the Beautiful, arranged by Mac Wilberg and performed by the Uni Utah State University Chamber Singers. They are directed by Corey Evans and accompanied on the piano by R.M. Arkelian. After the musical number, we will be pleased to hear from Governor John M. Huntsman, Jr., whose own distinguished career adds luster to the name that will grace our school. President Boyd K. Packer, acting president of the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles, will be the next speaker. A lifelong educator, President Packer was born in Brigham City and received his Bachelor of Science and Master of Science degrees from Utah State University. He earned his doctorate in educational organizations and institutions at Brigham Young University. Following President Packer's remarks, our university president, Stan L. Albrecht, will address us. President Albrecht, who assumed his current role in February of 2005, is a strong supporter of the College of Business. It was just last March that the university launched a comprehensive fundraising campaign that is well on its way to reaching its goal of $200 million. His vision for the university and his contributions to the College of Business are already having a powerful influence on the many students we serve. At the conclusion of President Albrecht's remarks, we'll watch a short video about the College of Business that will give us all a chance to meet some of the outstanding faculty, students, and supporters who make this college what it is today. John and Karen Huntsman will speak after the video. During today's events, it's likely that a number of speakers will talk of the people who have been blessed by the Huntsman's generosity. In the end, none of us will come close to assessing the real impact they have already had on so many lives. That influence expands today as we begin to more fully benefit from the vision that they have for this great institution. Life at Utah State University will be forever changed because of our association with them. Following John and Karen's remarks, President Albrecht and I will stand again, try to turn the tables just a little by offering the Huntsman's a gift of our own. Now, Corey Evans and the Utah State University Chamber Singers.
What a fantastic rendition of America the Beautiful, one of my favorite songs, written during the Andrew Jackson period of American politics, along with another one of my favorites, Amazing Grace. Uh, a wonderful and inspiring rendition. We thank uh, all who were involved. Um, it's an honor to be here representing the greatest state in America. The timing is a little peculiar because when the governor stands up after lunch, it always means instant indigestion on the part of most everybody. And for that, I apologize, but I'm here first as governor of this great state as this renaming takes place for which I and many others are extremely grateful and enthused. And second, because I am a very, very grateful son of wonderful parents who are making this happen. And I want to remind Dean Anderson, who's a wonderful human being, that it carries the name of a great man. It also carries the name of your governor, that great man after whom I am named, which suggests you've got some risk in the years ahead. <laughs> and for a school that prides itself on risk adjusting, I'm not sure that you've hit the mark, but what a wonderful thing. To Stan Albrecht, one of the truly great leaders in higher education, uh, our congratulations to you on this outstanding institution. 850 faculty members, 23,000 students, 200 different majors, three branch campuses, extension offices in all 29 counties around the state, a remarkable and profound impact on the delivery of education in this great state of ours. We thank you, President, very, very much. To Tom Garrity, who is here. Hey, Rit thank you, President. To Tom Garrity, who is here, one of the uh, most recognized and outstanding business school deans uh, anywhere in the world. It's a pleasure to be in your company. To my favorite business school dean, my uncle Blaine Huntsman, who was at the University of Utah years ago, one of my heroes in life. Thank you, Uncle Blaine, for being here. This morning I had the great opportunity of addressing the superintendents in this state who represent all of our districts, uh, all 40 of them, in public education. And I'm wondering why I'm here and why my dad is being recognized, because here was my grandfather's view of the world. If you were really superior as an intellect in life, you went into education, as my Uncle Blaine did, as many of my grandfather's generation did. As he taught my dad, you go into education because that's where you can make your mark. If you fail at education, then you can always go into business, <laughs> which is what my dad did. Well, I got the same lecture growing up, and that was, son, if you can't cut it in business, you go into politics. <laughs> so I'm not sure why I'm actually up here, other than that <laughs> I'm governor of a great state and the failure of a failure of a great educator. <laughs> but I am absolutely thrilled uh, to recognize my great parents. I love them dearly. And uh, I know Dad, in his early years, along with Uncle Blaine, were raised just north of here in the great state of Idaho, which is a state that Utah sh should have acquired a long time ago. <laughs> and I know that they look down at the great state here of Utah and always saw Utah State as uh, one of the crown jewels, one of the truly great institutions in this part of the country and indeed the world. I know this institution has a very, very special place in my dad's heart. And having been with him in business and as a best friend over the years, I know that he has looked to this day for a very, very long time. And I am thrilled to be able to participate, to watch it play out, and to be governor during this particular period. We miss, uh, however, my grandfather, Haight, who I know would have thoroughly enjoyed this moment, he having attended this great institution. But interestingly enough, he's connected as I see President Packer, who will speak in just a moment. You see, in 1988, Anton Lund was a member of the Utah Territorial Legislature who signed into law the legislation that made Utah State, of course, the Agricultural College of Utah back in 1888. The next year, 1889, Anton Lund became a member of the Twelve Apostles. I don't think that was prearranged. But Anton Lund 
was replaced as an apostle in 1921 by John Witso. John Witso in turn was replaced by Elder Adam Benyon. Adam Benyon in turn was replaced by Hubie Brown. Hubie Brown in place was, in turn was replaced by David B. Haight, my grandfather who loved this institution. And during the span of his years, as we were discussing the other day, saw everything from the events of Kitty Hawk to a man on the moon in 60 years time. That's how fa fast the race of technology has occurred during this last century and certainly during his lifetime. And now we stand looking at the world inspired by the great work of my dad, a great entrepreneur, a great philanthropist, a great humanitarian. And we're looking at the pillars on which this great school will be based as it moves forward. Those of globalization, entrepreneurship, because without entrepreneurship, we don't have business. We don't have people out willing to take a risk to build things that then funnel uh, funds into society that allow us to pay for all of the other bills. And the third being ethics. It's interesting to note, and Dean Garrity would certainly attest to this fact, that it wasn't until recently that ethics actually became a focus in an area of study at business schools around the country. And now we see today it is absolutely inexorably linked with the conduct of business everywhere. So we live in a free market, and with each passing generation, you get a new set of priorities and a new vision. I am thrilled that my father will bring some priorities to this school that he has long stood for and in my own humble opinion, embodied better than any other human being I have known. Let's not forget that in business schools, we need the rigor of all of the important disciplines that are taught, but we also need role models. Role models that our students can look up to and aspire to be like. And I guess the greatest compliment I can give my dad is I don't know a better role model the entire world for the next generation of students, particularly at this great school, to be looking up to. Because they're going to be venturing out into a world, a world where my parents have seen the population go from 2.5 billion to about 6.7 billion today a world that is gonna be tasked with the challenges of resources in the years to come. I'm talking about water, food, and energy. We'll be tasked with the challenges of technological development, everything from computation to biotechnology to nanotechnology, and everything else that is hurling our society forward at the speed of sound. And they will be tasked with the issues of economic integration that bring many of our foreign students and faculty members here. Brought about because of communication, transportation, overcoming basic language barriers. And the students at this great school are gonna be tasked with issues of governance. How you become a corporate citizen, not locally, but globally. But the one issue that is gonna transcend everything else, and the one issue that I am so honored my dad is increasingly known and respected for is ethics. He's written a book on the subject. If you haven't read it, I highly commend it to you. It's just one completely detached source, of course, not getting any revenue from it. Because as our next generation of students filter through these halls, they're gonna learn all the great lessons of technology, of economic integration, of governance, but they darn well better learn the important messages of ethics as well. Because if there's one thing in this world of globalization that will always provide that steady keel and steady ballast as a nation as we move forward, it will be our sense of ethics. And nowhere is this more important than in the business community. So my only hope is this, as this new name is embraced, representing one of the truly great men, the greatest person I've ever known, is that there will be a sense of coupling competition because all business schools need to teach competition. That is the coin of the realm today with ethics. And that from a result of those two will come a new generation of people who call themselves humanitarians because it is through that humanitarian streak that is so present in so many Americans 
that we will have a more peaceful and a more prosperous and a more sustainable world. Congratulations, one and all. I am thrilled to be part of today, and I can't tell you how, as a son, I am more excited and more honored by the person I simply call dad. Thank you so very much. found it a great honor to be invited to be here today to honor the Huntsman and also to be back to a place of my beginnings really. I had uh, come away from, <coughs> from four years in the Air Force and part of the last part of that I was sitting on a cliff on a little island of Ishima off the coast of Okinawa, which the island is about as big as your thumbnail. And uh, sat way into the night, moonlight night, wondering what I would do my, with myself when I, if I got out of the military safely. And I decided that I'd be a teacher. I reasoned that if I was a teacher, I would never be wealthy but I thought I would always be learning. And so in due course, I found myself here at Utah State Agricultural College. And uh, I'd married at that time, had three children, and uh, got my bachelor's degree, and uh, then worked on my master's. And there was one incident I'd like to mention to you. You know, they say that young men speak of the future because they have no past. Old men speak of the past because they have no future. <laughs> and uh, so I'm going to act my age and speak of the past. There was an experience I had that uh, won't seem like much to you, but it was a pivotal, pivotal time in uh, my life. I had uh, finished my dissertation, and my thesis rather, and uh, was to defend it. Along the way, I had got a little cross purposes with the dean who was chairman of my committee. I got cross purposes of him because I asked a question, three letter word. He'd made some suggestions about rearranging the thesis so entirely that I really would have to start over. So the question I asked was, why? Well, you don't do that. <laughs> and, uh, but things settled in and uh, they came and my thesis had been uh, accepted by the committee and I was to defend it. The uh, committee met and the dean opened the discussion, he was chairman of the committee, by giving me a lecture. And the lecture was uh, how fortunate I was to come to such a school as this. And he talked about the virtues of the school, the faculty, and all else that was here. And he went on and on. And the further he went on, the lower I felt. And uh, finally, he had finished his last lecture to me. And Dr. Wilfred Richards, who was director of the Institute of Religion here, also a member of the committee, responded and he said, uh, he's a very quiet spoken man, he said, yes, yes. He said, uh, Mr. Packer is very fortunate to be able to come to a school like this. Yes, yes, very fortunate. But we're fortunate to have him. What would a school be without students? And uh, the weather changed. <laughs> and. Uh, <coughs> Obviously, I survived the, the inspection. I've always remembered Wilfred Richards, and I've always remembered the fact that uh, 
a student is something. And uh, as you uh, accept this large donation, Dr. Albrecht, I'd like to give you just a little suggestion as to what you do with the money. <laughs> and, uh, you have all those people who are anxious to get part of it. And I can give you a little advice in connection uh, with that. And I quote a gunnery officer who uh, on the firing range said, ready on the right, ready on the left, ready on the firing line, ready, fire, aim. <laughs> and <laughs> laugh if you will, it happens all the time. This matter of firing before you aim. And as you look at the possibilities of where this money might be best used, look at the students. Look at the boy that uh, came from Mud Lake, Idaho, just across the border, or the girl from Grouse Creek, Utah, or the boy from uh, Nevada, from Searchlight, Nevada, or perhaps Ahmed Abad, who came from Turkey here to study. You've mentioned the foreign students here. And uh, one way or another, cause it to be aimed at the student the precious student at the university. And as the uh, influence trickles down, it will be best measured in the lives of those who come here to study and are influenced by it. The student is a very valuable commodity here at this university. Some years ago, I uh, supervised the church in England and on one occasion, my wife and I drove up to Oxford University to find the records of my seventh great-grandfather, who uh, had graduated from Oxford University, matriculated, as they called it. And we wanted to get the, the record of that. Dr. Popplewell, the head of Christ College at Oxford, very kind to us, he sent for uh, the record books for the... Uh, year 1558. They brought the big book in and laid it on the table. Probably hadn't been open for 200 years because when they listed with the heavy cover, bats and, and uh, uh, flew out. And, but there turning those pages, we found the reference where John Packer had matriculated at Oxford University. About a year later, we went back, and uh, I took a leather-bound copy of the Standard Works to uh, deliver to the library at Christ College at Oxford. And uh, we, uh, he was kind and accepted it, and then we were invited to return that evening to eat at the high table at St. Uh, Christ College. and. Uh, they had assigned a faculty member, retired faculty member, as our host. We met him at the building, and I mentioned to him as we crossed the campus, we saw a young man, obviously a student, he was running. He came across the lawn and then along the side of us and headed toward the dormitory. But he was weeping. I mentioned that, and this retired faculty man, member said, Oh, you must excuse me now for a few minutes. He was gone for some period of time and came back. Obviously, there was a student in trouble that needed help. We were late getting to the dinner at the high table, but we'd learned something. We learned something about Oxford University. Now, <clears throat> if uh, you'll devote what you have to devote to the student, then John and Karen Huntsman will have all of the thanks they need. I know John and Karen uh, wince at uh, praise and thanks. You know, uh, praise is a little like candy. 
you can nibble at it and, or like a condiment and you sprinkle it on your food. But if you swallow it whole, it does something to you. And uh, they're both very modest people. <clears throat> and their name on another building here will not be a great event in their lives so much as it would be a great event, event in the lives of the students. When I was a new student here, went to a class, signed up to a class on uh, literature by N.A. Peterson, who was a noted Shakespearean scholar. <clears throat> we met in, <clears throat> in the uh, dairy building, which was on the edge of the corrals, which I think covered this territory right here. The room was upstairs, and uh, it was a very large classroom, almost like an auditorium with sloped floors. I got there a little late, and every seat was taken. So I went up the stairs and was standing there against the back wall. Dr. Peterson, who looked like an aged Abraham Lincoln, came in, and he studied me for a few minutes, and he said, uh, what's the matter with you? Have you got a seat and no place to put it? <laughs> and uh, that was it exactly. And uh, in due course, after weathering that uh, defense of my thesis, I was looking for a place to be, a place to put my seat permanently. And I look back at Utah State as being a signal part of uh, my life, and uh, I'm honored to be here and give you that little advice, President Albrecht. You, uh, you don't fire the name. It works the other way. And uh, as you look at this great resource, study it carefully, and when you find and can prove to yourselves and have the committees prove to themselves that at the other end of it, is a student from somewhere trying to get through school, trying to find a place to put his seat, to make his fortune, and they will look back at uh, Utah State University as one of the great events in their lives. So I express to you our gratitude, extend a blessing to you, to everyone here, particularly to those intimately associated with the government of this institution and say to all of you a very Merry Christmas. Thank you. President Packer, we're delighted and honored to accept your charge. Uh, the themes of access and opportunity have been core to everything that we're doing at Utah State University, and so we certainly will find ways to integrate this gift in a way that will continue to allow us to build on those themes. And Governor, I must tell you that there are those in higher education in the state of Idaho that think we have acquired them. We'll continue moving in that direction. Let me offer my sincere thanks and gratitude to each of you for sharing this time with us on this very special day at Utah State University. As I look out at you, the size of this audience, I think, speaks to the enormous importance of today's event. The fact that so many of you have chosen to spend this time with us is both a tribute to the Huntsman family, but also underscores the commitment that so many are making to enhance the future of Utah State University. Our most special thanks, of course, go to John and Karen Huntsman and their children and grandchildren. We're so pleased that each of John and Karen's nine children are represented in the audience today. We appreciate that our, our governor has been able to join us on this historical occasion. I must tell you that Utah State University has no greater friend than Governor Huntsman. His leadership and support are allowing us to really provide access to a quality of higher education experience to citizens throughout the state of Utah 
in a manner that has never before been possible. We're proud of the prominent place in our university's history that is held by Karen's father, David B. Haight. We are pleased and honored at the attendance and remarks of President Packer and the contributions to our program of Elders Perry and Ballard. Both President Packer, as he has indicated, and Elder Perry spent undergraduate and graduate days as Aggies. And although Elder Ballard did not attend USU, his son Clark did, and we're mindful of the great contributions that were made by his grand great-grandparents to the history of Logan and of Utah State University. This truly is a most memorable day in the history of this institution. Today's announcement will forever change our institution. We're deeply humbled by the opportunity to partner with the Huntsman family in building a school of business that will become one of our nation's finest. John and Karen Huntsman, as been noted, have repeatedly demonstrated a remarkable generosity, whether for higher education, cancer research, Armenian earthquake victims, or homeless citizens in Utah cities, to cite just a few examples. On John's mother's tombstone in a cemetery in Fillmore, Utah, are etched the words, sweet are the uses of adversity. This is a family whose history is one of turning adversity into opportunity and then having seized that opportunity to give back in an extraordinarily and selfless manner. On April 10th, 2005, Joyce and I had the privilege of sitting next to John and Karen as they addressed a large gathering of USU students attending an LDS multi-stake fireside. It was a wonderful and inspiring evening for us all and then at the conclusion of that evening, John graciously extended to me an invitation to come and visit with him about something that he wanted to do for Utah State University. Two months later, on June 30th, I was able to spend almost two hours with John at his offices in Salt Lake City. During that exchange, I was given the opportunity more fully to understand the breadth and reach of his vision, his commitment to excellence, his passion, and most of all, his amazing generosity. David joined us for a portion of that meeting and reflected a similar commitment to what was being proposed. By the conclusion of that visit, we had agreed to begin a journey of opportunity and collaboration that would culminate in the announcement that we are making today. Over the next two years, we had other opportunities to meet and further refine the vision and the dream. In January of 2007, our newly appointed Dean of the College of Business, Douglas Anderson, be became a partner in that conversation. The appointment of this Dean was critical. He is an individual in whom the Huntsmans have absolute and total confidence. He will be able, with his colleagues, to provide the leadership that will allow us to succeed. The final partner to join our planning group was Janet Bingham, President and CEO of the Huntsman Cancer Foundation. Her experience in bringing these partnerships to fruition was vital. The outcome of that journey is that we're here today to proudly announce the founding of the John M. Huntsman School of Business at Utah State University. This announcement comes as a result of an amazing gift to our institution of nearly $26 million. $25 million Thank you, thank you. 25 million of this gift will go to our School of Business and approximately a million dollars will be used for scholarship support for our Armenian students. In 1889, only a year following the founding of this great university, 
a new department was created that would become the School of Commerce and Business Administration. The Wharton School at the University of Pennsylvania, recognized as the leading business school in the world, was founded just eight years earlier. Mr. Huntsman is currently chair of the Board of Overseers at Wharton. With his gift, he will now be intimately involved with both schools, one already honored as the world's leader, the other now given the opportunity to, ch to achieve its own distinct place among the finest schools in this country. As has been indicated, we're pleased to have Thomas Garrity, former dean at Wharton, and one of its most accomplished leaders in attendance, further attesting to the anticipated partnership between our two institutions. As is always the case, we build on the contributions of those who have gone before us. The foundation they have laid for us can now be enhanced by opportunities that are being created by this wonderful gift. Important goals have been set that will challenge and stretch us, but in meeting those goals, we will become a better college and a better university. This gift reflects great confidence in the direction that this university is moving. We intend to reward that confidence through the things that we do, things like attracting and supporting an outstanding faculty, creating opportunities for the most able and deserving of students, building programs of excellence that allow us to motivate and train the leaders of tomorrow, leaders who will be firmly grounded in the ethical moorings that so characterize our benefactor. We recognize that this gift reflects John Huntsman's absolute conviction that we will achieve the vision that has been outlined for us. But as important as the financial considerations of this gift are, it is even more significant that the Huntsman family is now committing to help us make the dream a reality by personally investing their precious time and energy to establish this school of excellence. We express our sincere and humble thanks for that commitment. We are humbled by the confidence placed in us. We stand firmly in support of the vision of opportunity that guides this wonderful land-grant university and look forward to stewarding these new resources in support of that vision. We enthusiastically accept the challenges that are set for us and embrace the opportunity that is now ours. For each of us here today, and for generations of students and faculty yet to come. Thank you. I've had amazing experiences in the College of Business, but my favorite one, I gotta say, was the trip to Peru, Chile, and Brazil last summer. I feel the most important aspect of the trip was the fact that students were able to apply what they learned in classes to a real world setting. One thing I really like about the College of Business is they emphasize ethics. I mean, in everything we talk about in classes, there's always that underlying point of ethics. Everybody seems to understand how important ethics are in the business world. During Entrepreneur Day, my brothers and I had a, the wonderful opportunity of pitching our business idea, and it was incredible to watch what happened to our company from that point on. It's a powerful thing when you can tap the best in people and focus it on worthy objectives. We're investing our best efforts in these key elements we're emphasizing the importance of ethical leadership. We're helping our students think like entrepreneurs. We're teaching them to navigate effectively in the global economy, and we're giving them the very best preparation in quantitative and financial tools. I'm excited about what's going on at the College of Business. I've been involved for a number of years, first as a student, and now as a university trustee. And this recognition that the College of Business is receiving is gonna enable it to get to the next level. For students, for alumni, it's a remarkable. It's going to be a great future for us, and I'm excited to be involved. Right now, as a college, we're reading John Huntsman's book, Winners Never Cheat, which gives examples of successful business leaders who will not compromise their principles. And I'm already in the organizations, and I'm really happy that here I can develop my leadership skills. By being a business ambassador, I've had the chance to meet with successful business leaders who challenged me, had the innovative in my thinking, and also created my solutions. Our faculty are entrepreneurs, researchers, consultants, real business people, and we try to bring that experience into the classroom every single day. I retired several years ago from this great school, and uh, my commitment 
to its students and the school has never faltered. It focuses on leadership, international business, and entrepreneurship in preparing the students for the world challenges they will face after graduation. And that's exactly the way it should be. If I had to use one word to describe the students in the College of Business, it'd be ambition. All of them are committed, they're hardworking, and they'll do whatever it takes to get the job done. The success of this school is indicative of our entire university's progress in achieving greater excellence. The school will provide opportunities for our students to become tomorrow's leaders, locally, regionally, nationally, and globally. We've raised our standards, we've defined our vision, and we've set new goals. As the John M. Huntsman School of Business, our progress will accelerate, our momentum increase. All of us benefit from this new vitality and focused energy. I'm honored to serve as the first dean of the Huntsman School of Business. Now is absolutely the perfect time to be involved in the College of Business because it's taking off. I'm going to be a graduate of the John M. Huntsman School of Business. I like the sound of that. Dean Garrity, could you just come up here for just a moment, please? Could we just hear an expression from Dean Garrity, who's been such a dear friend of ours over the years? I'm not on the program, so I won't take long, but I just want to say what a really deep honor and privilege it is to be here today on this great occasion for Utah State University and for the Huntsman School of Business. Uh, I want to also let you know that you are extraordinarily fortunate to have not just John's fortune behind you, but John Huntsman, the man behind you. Because I can attest firsthand that uh, John really knows how to build world-class business schools. Uh, John has been the key driver behind Wharton's move towards preeminence over the last 25 years. He served actively as a leader on Wharton's board for 23 years, and then we're so fortunate to have him step up as chairman of that board for the last nine years. As dean of Wharton, John was my full partner and my role model in molding Wharton into what it is today. And John is a man of vision, but he's also a man of action. He not only helped us redefine what real excellence meant, he also made sure that we kept not resting on our laurels ever, but raising the bar year by year by year in everything we did. He also made sure that we strategically foresaw the coming of globalization when it was just a gleam in some people's eye, the globalization of business that's now sweeping the United States and the world. And he made that tangible at the University of Pennsylvania in founding the Huntsman Program in International Studies and Business, a joint program on internationalization and the role of business that has become without parallel the single finest undergraduate degree program at the University of Pennsylvania and I would say in the world. John also was a blessing for us in reaching out to the students and having a vision of bringing the students together who were scattered across our campus. And uh, we launched building the finest combined undergraduate and MBA building in the world. And John allowed us to name it. And I agree his name means so much the John M. Huntsman Hall, so that our, to our students will forever be associated with a truly great man, a man of the highest strategic vision, the deepest personal integrity, and the broadest selfless humanity that I have ever known. And thus John has blessed Wharton and now Utah State University 
and the Huntsman School of Business is blessed beyond your imaginings by the extraordinary support of John Huntsman and his family. I have seen the vision, I've studied the vision of President Albrecht and uh, Dean Anderson and John Huntsman, and I fully embrace it and can visualize it ahead. And I look forward to monitoring and watching and applauding your journey over these years ahead as it unfolds before you and blossoms in many, many ways as you move forward. I wish you all the very, very best every step of the way. Thank you. I have known the man whose name will be on this business school for over a half a century. I can remember in 1955, I was sitting in an assembly in Palo Alto High School. John was the student body president, and it was an awards assembly at the end of the year. And after, there were two events that I remember at that particular assembly. One was that John led the student body in a Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. And it was the first time that any of us had put under God in the Pledge of Allegiance. And John couldn't remember where it went. And I remember how embarrassed he was, but somehow he got through that event. Shortly thereafter, at the end of this awards program, John, as the student body president, called up the custodians to the stage and presented each one of them. He gave a talk about each one of their lives then he presented them with a gift. And I know that John and Blaine were working at Penny's at the time, and it was a tie from J.C. Penny's. The, the custodians opened those boxes with tears streaming down their eyes as John hugged each one of them and thanked them for making a difference in the students' lives. That had never been done at a high school assembly. The value of work, the value of integrity, honesty, have been woven in John's fiber, everything he has ever done. And it's hard to go back and talk about John's er early years without talking about his brother Blaine, how the two of them used to push a lawnmower and were responsible for mowing the elementary school grounds during the summer. John was in sixth grade and Blaine was in the seventh grade. It's wonderful when you grow up with a set of ethics and standards in your fiber that you don't have to walk out the door in the morning and try and figure out how you're going to conduct your life that particular day. That it's just a part of who you are. When we were first married and John brought home our first paycheck, $350, and we were in the military, and I noticed that $50 would be missing from that paycheck every month as we would go over our budget. And somehow John would say, it's in a special fund. Months later, I learned that he anonymously was giving it to a person down the street that he thought needed that money. John knew the value of putting back, of making a difference in people's lives, no matter how much he had. He didn't wait until he had a lot of money to give money away. He was giving it away from the very beginning. It's been a wonderful ride to stand by his side, to learn together, to grow together. I don't know a more moral, giving, thoughtful man. I want him to know how much I love him. And I want each of you to know how deeply he loves this school and will put everything he has into building a wonderful business school with each one of you. And I know that such an important part of John's life is a belief in Jesus the Christ and his Father. And in the atonement that gives each one of us hope that there is a belief in a higher being and that directs and makes such a difference in his life this day. And that is a part of him every day of this life and it makes a difference wherever he goes. I am grateful for our children 
for our grandchildren, for all of our friends and associates, for each of you in this room, for all that you do to make a difference in those people that you come in contact with every day. Isn't that the most important thing in our life, is to touch the lives of those people that we see each day? We all struggle. We all have things that we have to deal with each day. But that's what makes us strong, stronger. That's what gives us our character. It is the adversity that makes us grow. I am grateful to be able to have stood by John's side all of these years for his comfort, for his guidance, most of all for his love, and to be able to stand by his side. And I'm grateful to be here this day, and I would have to ask the dean if he wouldn't mind inviting John up every quarter, every semester, to teach a class, just to give a lecture, to let the students feel of his heart and soul, and to keep him in the classroom. And if they want a real treat, then they should invite his brother Blaine to come up too. <laughs> grateful to be here, grateful for this wonderful opportunity to be able to make a difference. Thank you. This has been an absolutely spectacular event, and I'm tremendously humbled by it. And um, President Pack was absolutely right. These events create a sense of nervousness. It's a lot easier just to slip a check under the door and run. <laughs> and I'd suggested that to President Albrecht he said, well, we'll just have a brief luncheon. We won't even have a dinner. We'll just have a short luncheon. And that may ease the concern. So I thank each of you for being with us. I have some prepared notes that are brief. After Karen's remarkable words, I, I feel a bit uh, clumsy to, to, to share these with you from note cards because her remarks were so thoughtful and so sweet and so kind. I'm very, very appreciative to, to each one of you. May I just say to the beloved brethren of the 12 who are here, and to our honorable governor and our, our son, John Jr., and to President Stan Albrecht, who has done such a magnificent job, and to you, Dean D Douglas Anderson, and distinguished faculty and noble students of Utah State University, and particularly my, my dear friends from Armenia, the students who are here, who we've assisted and who we love so dearly. My dear brother Blaine, who is a former dean of the university just south of here. <laughs> and my, Karen's and my, our, our revered family members, our sons and daughters, our, their spouses, our grandchildren. Many are here today, many are not. But I hope they know of the great love their mother and father share for them. And certainly, last but not least, the many students watching this program on video in the Sunburst Lounge. Take a deep breath and I salute you over there in the Sunburst Lounge. It's nice to have you with us. First, permit me to express my heartfelt feelings of gratitude to Karen and you, President Packer, and, and son John to you, the governor of this state, and President for your thoughtful remarks. And Dean Garrity, Thomas Garrity, who was a Rhodes Scholar from MIT, one of the most brilliant men in America. And we were fortunate enough to have him as our dean. And he moved our school to number one in the world, according to the Financial Times of London, and has stayed up there over these years. And it was such a joy to be surprised this morning with, with, with Dean Garrity's arrival here from Philadelphia. And Dean Anderson, thank you, and one and all, for your gracious and kind remarks. This choir was just outstanding, and I thank the, the remarkable people and, and those who had a part to play in that. And my profound appreciation to dear elders Perry and Ballard, Perry and Ballard, for your thoughtful expressions of, of prayer. Having now expressed my feelings, I hope I will never be caught in the crossfire between President Packer, Elder Perry, 
Elder Ballard and Elder Wortham, as to who among these four has the deepest roots and the most noteworthy genealogy in the northern Utah area. <laughs> Karen and I, together with our entire family, wish to express gratitude and thanksgiving for the magnificent opportunity to be affiliated with one of the finest institutions of higher learning in America, Utah State University. We are indeed sensitive and respectful to those who have gone before us in providing a remarkable foundation and a reputation for the College of Business. Numerous discussions have been held and will continue to transpire regarding programs and classes and students and scholarships that provide a better understanding of today's global economy. The world is changing dramatically. In business, students must understand the role of emerging nations. They must study the volatility of currencies in order to comprehend financial commerce in a dynamic world. Our faculty and administration will constantly be reviewing the practical aspects of business courses offered to our students. We should be vigilant and sensitive, sensitive to the current and future business climate. Hopefully, we will earnestly seek the most enriching seminars of study that will give our graduating students a jump start on either Wall Street or Main Street, in either Toronto or Tremont, in either Beijing or Pocatello. Many of our students will come from farms or rural settings. It is important for them and others to study entrepreneurship and how small businesses can survive and prosper in today's complex marketplace. My generation never discussed financial terms during business school, such as petrodollars, nanotechnology, or subprime loans. Yet today, it is critical for our students to comprehend these new economic challenges. Truly, the School of Business on this beautiful and unique campus should strive to teach not only the latest state-of-the-art business practices, but the inculcation of ethics in all of its forms to ensure that each graduate is a man or woman of unquestioned integrity. At the end of the day, our character, together with our charity, will determine our ultimate destiny. Whether it be on the Forbes 400 list or in the quiet surroundings of our private lives and families. Our quest for wealth can, in fact, be a healthy adventure, but only so far as we share our abundance with those who suffer or in situations where our personal benefaction can indeed provide a positive influence in the success of individuals or institutions. It is with humility and deep affection for each of you and this great institution and its student body that we acknowledge this incredible honor that you have given our family to be bonded together in this enduring enterprise. We humbly seek God's powerful blessings to be upon this great university, the new business school, and each one of you and your extended families. Thank you so very much for the kind expressions today relating to our family. Our hope now and in the future regarding this esteemed business school and its students can best be summarized by yet another important personal attribute, which is the respect for human dignity. This trait must be part of every course taught and the individual stand that each student embraces. Perhaps the following expression summarizes best this critical challenge. No man is an island. No man stands alone. Each man's joy is joy to me. Each man's grief is my own. We need one another, so I will defend each man as my brother, each man as my friend. 
Thank you, and God bless you. Again, our, our deep appreciation to each of you for joining us on what is indeed a spectacular day in the history of Utah State University. Let me just quickly acknowledge a number of individuals that have gotten us to this point, that have played roles in helping us plan the event, that have continued the conversations in such an important way. Pam Bailey from John Huntsman's office and several members of our staff at Utah State University have really taken the lead. Patty Halafia, Alta Barkison from the uh, College of Business, Diane Barnett, and Sidney Peterson from my office. Thank you. We struggle a bit to uh, identify a gift that we thought would be appropriate for this occasion. We have chosen a photograph taken by a member of our faculty, Craig Law, well known in Utah Law's work photographing indigenous petrographs and petroglyphs in the barrier country of Utah was recently featured in Smithsonian Magazine. The photograph that we'll present as a gift from Utah State University to John and Karen Huntsman is entitled The Harvest Panel. It's from the maze area of Canyonlands National Park. The panel dates back 6,000 years and is located one of, in one of Utah's most inaccessible areas. Won't you please join me once more in thanking and acknowledging this wonderful gift. <clears throat> We're so glad and so delighted that you've all been able to join us today. Certainly this is a day that will be long remembered by all of us who've been here today. We do thank you for making the special effort to join us in this extraordinary and memorable occasion. We want to thank especially John and Karen and all of their family because we know that this is a relationship that will go on now for many generations. I specifically and particularly want to acknowledge David Huntsman, my dear friend, and thank him for his participation in this gift. Thank you, David. <clears throat> and now, following the benediction, I would ask the audience to please remain seated while the Huntsman Party, including Governor Huntsman, President Packer, and others, leave the ballroom. They are headed back to another important event and need to catch a plane. Elder Ballard, may we ask you to offer a benediction on these proceedings? Our Father in heaven, very humbly, we bow our heads in gratitude for the privilege of being here this afternoon. How grateful we are for the great blessings that have been poured out upon the Huntsman family, for the genius of John, and for his great willingness to share the blessings that have come to him and his family with others. We invoke a blessing upon them. <clears throat> Ask thy spirit to be with each and every member of the family. 
wherever they may be, that they may have a rich outpouring of thy blessings upon them. We invoke a blessing and a benediction upon this university, upon the president, on all of his associates, the dean of this new school, the John M. Huntsman School of Business, and invite thy spirit and guidance to be with all those that will carry forward from this time that this may reach all of the dreams and all of the vision that these good people have to bless the lives of young people who will come here and go forth into the world and do great and marvelous things in their own lives to help and bless the lives of others. Dismiss us now, Heavenly Father. We thank thee for all we have and offer this prayer in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.